We're still in wildlife. Mr. Bivens, did you want to readdress the commission? My name is Vance Bivens. Uh, just recently been uh, elected to, again, to the Teleco Mountain Barn Bull Club as the president of it. Uh, I would like to, to, to read one remark here. Uh, it's been uh, brought to my attention on numerous occasions that uh, uh, the commission has been told and maybe a lot of the uh, representatives uh, contacted the commission and, and complained. I don't really know. But just in case there's not been adequate uh, communications, and uh, I know I wanted to read this little excerpt of in the Knoxville News Sentinel. It was dates back to October the 23rd, 2011. It says that <coughs> uh, State Representative John Mark Wendell, Dem Democrat of Livingston, says the hunting ban, which include includes forbidding use of dogs to chase hogs in most public hunting areas was absolutely not what he had in mind when sponsoring the bill to change hogs legal status. So he wasn't trying to do that. And I, I wanted to clear that up in case uh, from whatever was said to the commission. Uh, on the manner and means, uh, I have a, a request here that uh, in a situation of where that I hunt, uh, in a situation over in, in Cumberland County, uh, well, that wouldn't apply over there because there's no buyer hunting season as of yet over in, in that area. But there in the Cherokee National Forest, uh, we was allowed to kill or to take a, a, a buyer, one buyer per year, and uh, a hog and uh, then it was changed to no limit on the hogs and we're still allowed to take a hog providing that we don't kill a bear uh, as uh, incidental uh, taking of the hogs but the Teleco Mountain Bear and Boar Club the Tennessee Hunters Alliance and Tennessee Bear Hunters Association has made <coughs> this next request to uh, this request to the region three office we would like to reiterate the request to the commission and we request that uh, uh, we be able to take the guns back for the incidental taking of hogs and uh, that be where it was legal for us in the past to take a hog and or bear and uh, if I understood Commissioner Cannon correctly, it was just taking the gun back and that failed, didn't it? Uh, you have not voted. Uh, but I understood that uh, it was gonna be for just the remainder of that one day when you shot the bear. But that, that's not what we're requesting. Uh, we're requesting as long as there's a hog sea or a, a bear season going on, we can go bear hunting and we can incidentally take a hog, you know. And I know some of the representatives told uh, the TWRA uh, when that first came up that it doesn't absolutely, it just absolutely makes no sense at all uh, to him, and he was speaking as a state representative, uh, said you want to get rid of the hogs, but you won't let them take their guns back and kill the hogs up there. So, I don't know, you'll all have to hash that out. But getting back to uh, the three uh, clubs, and we'd like to request that hog hunting with dogs be reestablished on all WMAs and all counties who were previously hunted with dogs. We also request hunting with dogs be permitted in counties where hog hunting with dogs was not previously permitted. When, proper, when property owners request our help for hog control to prevent crop and property damage without restrictions except for a no hunting period with dogs during deer season. And 
I want to make a few remarks about uh, and bring up some serious topics for consideration on this above request. Only, and, and like I said a while ago, it's hard for us to, to believe that hog hunting has been taken away from us in the state of Tennessee. Hunters have been blamed for, and still being blamed, uh, for <clears throat> uh, the hog problems and uh, for moving the hogs around. In our expl explanation and uh, to the legislators, we sent you all a copy. I don't know if you read that or not, but uh, most of the things that was in that, it's pretty hard to argue against, you know, our viewpoints and, and the way that we look at things. Of course, we was not asked anything of how any, it was all a big surprise to us as, as hog hunters. But anyway, I want you to, and, and I'm gonna give you a copy of this uh, and some other things, and I'm gonna give that to um, Chairman McMillan and, and uh, we're, we're still gonna be open with you all on, the, on this matter. And uh, as, I, as we uh, stated before, the hog issue is not over with. I guess it is to TWRA and you all, but it's still not uh, over with with us. But <clears throat> one of the things, only Mississippi State University, coupled with the Berman Institute at Middle, uh, uh, Mississippi State University recommends hunting be disallowed as part of hog control program that we have found. And we have done a lot of research on the internet uh, with, with other, uh, we've even made phone calls and talked with individuals and, uh, and only, uh, the only one that recommended this and where I knew that by the uh, individual that come and, and, uh, and at the commission meeting in Newport, Kingsport, I'm sorry, uh, had a big part in it, and I, at that time I didn't know that uh, that he was uh, or was a former employee of the Mississippi State University, and he was also the national outreach coordinator for the Berman Institute. And uh, but that's the only deal right there that we have found that does not or that does recommend uh, disallowing. Uh, dog hunting and hunting period in a, in a hog control program. Second, all state wildlife agencies that has documented hog control recommendations has, <coughs> at, has hunting with dogs playing a major part in hog control that we have observed except for TWRA and the state of Kansas. Next one, all states that borders the state of Tennessee, possibly an exception of two states that had little or no hog problems and or a very small population, and that's uh, uh, Arkansas and Virginia, has basically the same program for hog control as Tennessee, except they allow hunting with dogs year round on private lands except during deer seasons in most cases, especially where hog problems exist. The only good remark about the state of Kansas is they are the only state that has reduced their hog population. They are, ha they are having funding problems for their hog eradication program. They have spent approximately 225000 dollars annually for seven years. The total hog population estimation in 2006 when this began was 1,500 hogs at first. Later we found on the uh, on a website that that estimate, estimation had been increased to 2,000 hogs and that's the total population in the state of Kansas. And after seven years of trapping and aerial shooting, they still have a hog population 
in the flat open plains. Consider the meaning of the first long-term wild hog control commitment made to farmers in McMinn County. And I don't want anyone to think for one minute that we're, we're against what you all are doing and the, and the commitment and what you're trying to do to help the farmers down there in the aerial shooting and, and uh, the trapping, the snaring and whatever. We're not asking you to stop that. We're, <clears throat> we want those farmers, to be their crops to be protected. Now, in, in that uh, uh, agreement, uh, those, that hog population has been growing down there for 10 years. So they must have an, an awful lot of, of hogs. But now remember, that was one of the counties that the uh, hog hunting was not permitted with, uh, with dogs down there. And so it continued to grow. So that's, that's another reason and, and, and that we uh, can blame, you know, uh, the management of hogs, the failure to manage hogs. You know, the, uh, all of the blame certainly does not. And in fact, we don't think very much of the blame uh, can be placed on the dog hunters simply because it doesn't make any sense for dog hunters to be carrying the, the hogs over to Middle Tennessee when we're never allowed to go over there and run hogs with dogs anyway, or in, in a lot of the other counties. There in, in between uh, Polk County and Monroe County, there sits May, uh, McMinn County right there beside us, and we've never uh, been allowed to run them with dogs legally there in McMinn County. So, <coughs> Another consideration <coughs> that consider the meanings of the first long-term wild hog commitment made to farmers in McMinn County, the number of TWRA employees, along with wildlife services aerial shooting employees, agency trapping and agency snaring employees, and this is the consideration. How many counties will request the same privilege and what will it cost per county? You know, it's coming. Because each of the other counties, a lot of other counties got hog problems also. So when they find out about me in county, and there again, I'm not asking you to, to stop the Min County project. I, I'm gonna ask you to, to uh, in a few minutes, to let us start hunting hogs again. You know, I've got the answer if you just listen to me. So, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, consider the statements made on the websites about the very close working relationship for approximately 16 years made by Wildlife Services and the Humane Society of the U.S. Statement has been made on both sides. I've read them personally. We've done a lot of research. What road are we on and where is it leading our hunting programs and are we failing, are we falling into the hands of the Humane Society? Mr. Bivens, excuse me, I'd hate to interrupt, but um, I feel like we're getting a little redundant at this point. We definitely wanna see and hear all your information. You could probably get all this in here and you know let us proceed with some of the other things we've got to do by emailing it to us but I'm not cutting you off right now but just you know hit your highlights and then we, we can uh, you know read the rest of it up. I've only got two part two little small paragraphs okay thank you and consider the impact of substantial reduction in funding this is a real possibility the wildlife services has operated in secrecy for numerous years, but now being exposed by wildlife agencies in other states, former employees, university professors, environmental groups, scientists, newspapers, and congressmen requesting for an investigation of wildlife services, and I put et cetera, because there's others. But 
in, in the uh, thing that I'm going to, to, uh, uh, to give uh, Dr. McMillan, you can, uh, you can highlight uh, those uh, websites and you can see and you can find the things that I'm telling you is, is true and factual according to uh, testimony, uh, people, uh, uh, different individuals talking. But here's the, the final ordeal. We sportsmen's request the commission give careful consideration to the facts we have presented both past and present in a truthful way to the best of our ability. We ask that you consider the road that we are on and where it's leading. We sportsmen request and are in hope that this commission will reestablish hog hunting in the state of Tennessee by the time hunting season starts in 2013. The hog eradication program budget would go to zero expense for TWRA. We've never figured out. I don't, I don't know what has been spent on the hog eradication program so far. But if things, if, uh, if things had been talked over with the uh, with, uh, sportsmen, I, I, I'll grant you one thing, things would have been a lot differently, been a whole lot cheaper. So I'll, I'll give this uh, uh, copy of this, of what I went over with Commissioner, uh, with Chairman McMillan. And I have, uh, uh, in fact, I've got, uh, uh, All of that Thank you. I have a quick question. I have much more stuff that I can read from the employees of the wildlife services that is really damaging to them. Who is wildlife services? I'm sorry, I missed that. It's a department. Oh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife? Chairman, I, I'm not sure I heard this correctly. Is, is, is the suggestion being made that somehow the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency is anti-hunting because we're not at all anti-hunting. We're absolutely pro-hunting in every way. But we recognize that these uh, hogs compete with every other species that we hunt. And we have tried to arrive at a method uh, which has worked, as I understand it, and is working in other states to eradicate these animals. Uh, the other question that I had or comment, I, I'm not sure I understand the incidental taking of hogs for bear hunting. Do we have, is that, is, is that defined in our regs? Can someone tell me what that is? Simply what incidental taking of hogs means is if there's another hunt ongoing, and it, it, this occurs on many of our WMAs, if there's another hunt ongoing, if, if you're participating in a bear hunt or even deer hunts on most of our WMAs out in the East Tennessee, if you're hunting that animal and a hog walks by, you're, you're perfectly legal to shoot that. We allow the incidental take of, of hogs. But you, can't, you cannot go there for the purpose of going to hunt hogs. When the original, when we used to hunt hogs and we had bear seasons, was that also, they, they coincide. They coincide. Okay. Pretty much. So they still coincide as far as er trying yeah. to eradicate. Okay. When we originally um, changed the regulations on hogs, there was no incidental take in the original language. Is that correct? No, because you more or less had a bear season and a hog season, and so when we when we did away with the hog hunting opportunities, a lot of those areas that we traditionally killed a lot of hogs, we 
we still had the bear season in place and we allowed them to incidentally take hogs as well. And they could still do that in many other areas. Daryl, can you tell us um, how many days that an incidental hog can be taken versus what it used to be? I mean, how much we, we differences would, there are in the hunting actual days that, that, or is it just the complaint that there's less areas and less land for them to hunt on? Isn't there still as, as many days as there ever was? On a, on a lot of our WMAs, we, we'd have to total that up. Um, it, it adds confusion because it used to be hog hunting was year-round no limit statewide. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so okay. they, they were able to, to shoot a hog at any time, and that's when we started seeing hogs show up uh, all over the state. Is there anything else that anyone would like to discuss during the Wildlife Management Committee? That concludes our business. Thank you. Okay, at this time, uh, I'm going to turn uh, it over to Harold Cannon, Chairperson of Boating Law Enforcement Committee. The committee recognizes Ed Poulos, the Clean Vessel Act uh, Coordinator for our state. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a second. I promise I'm not going to make y'all think or vote or do anything. I'm not going to fall on the sword either. So we're this will this will be good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, be, be careful what I say. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come uh, today and and update you on two programs that I'm the coordinator for 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 uh, boating and law enforcement division. These two programs are the boating infrastructure and the Clean Vessel Act grant programs that that we manage that we administer here through TWRA. Both of these programs are celebrating a, uh, an anniversary for TWRA, and so it's a perfect time to, to provide an update to the commission, and we appreciate the opportunity. The Clean Vessel Act has been in place for 20 years. It's celebrating its 20-year anniversary since the governor provided that to TWRA. So since 1993, so we're 20 years um, providing grants through the Clean Vessel Act, and it's 10 years since the Boating Infrastructure Program did its first grant in Tennessee. So it's two, highlighting two programs today and it's really appropriate timing. I'm going to start with the Clean Vessel Act. The Clean Vessel Act is a program that was enacted by Congress and what it's designed to do is it's designed to allow recreational boaters to keep the waterways clean. The, what, it, it, it's designed to, to allow the, the sewage that's collected in vessels by recreational boaters to get that out of the vessel and into a treatment system. So what we do is it's a grant program and we provide 75% of the funding for marinas that wish to participate in the program to put in a pump out station where vessels have the ability to stop and remove the, the sewage from vessels. As you can see, when the program first started, we did a survey in Tennessee and there were three pump out stations that existed in 1993. So boaters that wanted to do the right thing didn't have the ability to. We understand that boaters, generally, they're who are using the waterways. We know that they want to be good stewards of the water. However, in 1993, they didn't have the ability. So with, with those three, the program came into place. And what does it cover? So what we do is we fund the installation, the purchase, the installation, and any maintenance for these, for these systems. Highlights of this program, since the program has been in place for the last 20 years, we've done 187 projects statewide and expended over $5.4 million to Tennessee Marinas to, to install these stations. The one highlight that we're extremely proud of and we know you appreciate very much is since 1993, in 1993, the first year we had the program, we used $20,000 of state money to start the program. Since that $20,000, there's been zero state dollars ever requested for the Clean Vessel Act. The program, the match that's required, the marinas provide the match not only for their project but for our administration costs for this. So there's no state dollars at the state that we use administering this program. The TWRA program, we're nationally recognized. We uh, received the uh, State Organization of Boating Access award for, for running the, for administering the best clean vessel light program. We're proud of that. And we have done more, our 187 projects is almost double any other inland state 
uh, nationwide. So, so we're, we're happy about that. Show you a little bit real quickly, show you a little bit about what, we, what the projects look like. These are the pump out stations that, and this is kind of what we saw about the first 10 years. These are stations that are placed on kind of at fuel docks and it allows the boaters to pull up at, as they're getting fuel and to remove the sewage from vessels. The program kind of morphed and we understood we needed to get those projects out there, but then we also understood that there were a lot of houseboats that sat away from marinas that didn't have the ability to pull to the gas docks. And so then the pump out vessel kind of became the next, the next part of this program. And so you can see here two examples. And so those, they go out to the boats that are moored off site. They remove the sewage. They have tanks on the, on the vessel. They carry it back to the shoreline treatment system and they treat that, that sewage. Then for the last few years, and it's really occurred when the, when the economy went down and we started seeing people that wanted to continue to use their boats. However, the, the gas prices were, were higher, so they were, they were using their boats, but they may not be leaving their slip. They were staying on their boats, but on their slips. So what we're seeing, and you can see in this picture here, the last few years we've seen marinas actually plumb in the entire, every slip at the marina for large boats. So that way a boat doesn't have to leave the slip. It's kind of like an RV park. They're parked there, they're tied up to the, the sewage at all times. Also, it's convenient to them. If they go out and they boat during the day, they come back in, they don't have to wait at the gas dock anymore. They pull in, they pull into their own slip, and they can pump their sewage at the same time. One last thing on there, we've been doing it 20, 20 years, uh, 187 projects, but it's still a program that's alive and kicking. We've got 16 projects currently underway at some, at some form, so it's a, it's a program that's been beneficial to us, beneficial to the Marines, beneficial to the boaters, but it's still, it's still very active. The, the second program that, the grant program that I'm going to update you on is our Boating Infrastructure Grant Program. And that is, that is a program that is designed to fund boating facilities for boats greater than 26 feet in length. So what occurred in 2001, Federal Congress understood that, that large boaters paid the gas tax, the same way that we pay gas tax when we buy fuel, and they were using that, that money for the highways. The boaters were paying this money and so they, they weren't getting any benefit. So the boating infrastructure program uh, was enacted for boats greater than 26 <coughs> feet to provide the facilities for these boaters, to provide docking stations, to provide laundries, to provide restrooms, to provide anything that a boater needs as he wants to come see your city. So for instance, if a boater from Michigan or Ohio wanted to boat to Chattanooga, to spend money in Chattanooga, we need, this program allows them to put things in place to service those boats where they want to come to our cities. Kind of two-tiered two approach. The state of Tennessee gets 100,000, so we get a small amount every year to, to use as we see fit. The, that's the first part of the program. The second part of the program is a nationally competitive program where, where municipalities, marinas in, in Tennessee can compete nationally for, for funding. This program, for the last 10 years, we've completed 14 projects. It's spending, uh, expending $2.8 million under this program. This program, unlike CBA, we've never asked for a dollar state money. This is a, it's a 100 percent federal money, even for our administrative costs, the recipients of the grants provide those match monies that are required for this program. Also, the TWRA is nationally recognized. We're one of only two states that their boating infrastructure program received the boating access award through the state's organization. So we're extremely proud of that as well. The next few slides are just pictures of projects. This is actually two projects. The, these are the first projects that we ever put on the ground. And, and you can see there's downtown Chattanooga, there's the aquarium. There's transit facilities on this side of the bridge. There's transit facilities on that side of the bridge, about 2,000 linear feet of transient dock space. This occurred right when the city of Chattanooga was doing their waterfront redevelopment. So we were proud to be a part of that. These docks that are there at Chattanooga probably get more use than any transient facilities that, that this program has put in, not only in the state of Tennessee, but almost nationwide. The next one, this is a small project, downtown Clarksville. The city of Clarksville is just off to your right, and it's a small transit facility to allow boaters coming down to Cumberland to stop and use the, and go and see the city of, of Clarksville. One thing I'll tell you about both of these first two slides, when you see uh, municipalities that use our program, that take part in this program, you're going to see here in the next few slides, they come back. 
they see the benefits of this program and they, and they want to participate again in the future. This is one where we, uh, we joined with TDEC at the Pickwick State Park. It's hard to, hard to see, the, the hotel is there. This is the transient facility that sits right in front of the hotel, right there at the dam. There was not a, a dock at the hotel. So this allows, this is another project that, that gets quite a bit of use. It allows boaters to stop at this dock and go to the restaurants, go to the state park, use the state park, spend money at the state park, all the good things that, that we want them to do. This goes in conjunction, like I said, the, the city of Clarksville, this is one that was just completed this fall. This was transit facilities at the new marina in the city of Clarksville, and it, what the program did is we, this is the entire new marina. The transient facilities are what this uh, program provided. This was a nationally awarded program, a nationally awarded project that, that was funded through TWRA. This one just was complete this summer. This is at Norris Dam Marina on Norris Lake. You can see the, the transient facilities there to allow boaters to come to the state park, to come to the marina, and also to come to Norris Dam State Park to dock their boats there and to use that. And this was just completed this fall, I mean this spring. Just as Clean Vessel Act has, has things going, uh, the Boating Infrastructure Program also has, still has things going. We have three we have three projects that are currently in some phase of award. The first one is Teleco Reservoir uh, Development Agency. That one is, is currently just going under contract. That money is already in our budget. The next two is, is will come up in the budget uh, meeting, uh, committee meeting here in just a minute, requesting uh, additions, expansions to the budget. And that is an additional uh, transient facility adding on to one at the city of Ashland City. And it's a ch uh, the city of Chattanooga received a one point a uh, two million dollar grant uh, award from this. One thing that I'd like to say, and it kind of goes along with the freedom effort that uh, Chairman you were referring to, all of our projects that are funded through this program are ADA accessible. So for boaters to use any of these docks as part of our program, that is a requirement for these docks. So all of these docks that are funded through this program are, are ADA accessible. Another highlight that, that we see that's kind of an unintended consequence, but it's something that we definitely like to highlight. You're looking at about $8 million worth of projects. We are also proud that this part puts Tennesseans to work. We understand that these are infrastructure projects, but these are plumbers, these are electricians, these are dock builders in the state of Tennessee where we're granting these marinas money, and yet they're, they're putting Tennesseans to work building these projects, and we're proud of that as well. That's all I have, unless you have any questions. Any questions from the commission or from the public? I Ed, appreciate your time Thank very you. Much. You're doing a great job on two great programs. We appreciate you. That's all we have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, we're going to move on to the Budget Committee now. Jeff Griggs, Chairman. Budget Committee would ask any staff member or person in the audience want to address or make a comment on the budget expansion or real estate report, please do so by coming to the mic, stating your name, your title, and also the group that you represent. With that said, Darren Ryder, would you please come to the front and present a budget expansion, please, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we appreciate Ed. I know some of the commissioners have, have seen him before, but some of the newer commissioners was just highlighting those two programs. So when you see me come up here and ask for a budget expansion, hope you you can put it together. My first budget expansion request is what uh, Ed referred to as a tier two project at Chattanooga. And you may, you may show a different figure, so there's a slight change due to uh, budget. He likes to round off, Mr. Ken likes to round off. So this request is for $1,285,900 instead of the 868. And this is for the city of Chattanooga for the transient uh, dock facilities. Again, this is uh, uh, boating infrastructure grant monies, all of its federal flow through, and the match is <laughs> the match is, is done by the city of Chattanooga. What I don't know, uh, it, it, the tier two money, just so you know, there's about $16 million national pot every year, and uh, so Chattanooga's get $1.2 million of that $16 million pot, and it's one of 12 projects on, on tier two monies. 
And if you have any questions, I'll answer them. Now we know why Chink showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any question from commissioners? Any questions from the audience? Let me, let me say one thing. Uh, please come to, sir, would you please come to the mic and state your name, sir? <laughs> and I will do all rise if you don't come. <laughs> William Brown. Uh, I was going to tell Ed a minute ago, during the spring, with all the rains and the floodgates open, those docks that they showed you downtown, were underwater for two straight weeks. I mean, totally underwater. So somebody's done a good job building them. They didn't go anywhere. And uh, a lot of water was coming through there. But we're glad to have that extension. Mr. Brown, we're glad to have you here today too, sir. I've asked any more discussion from the commission or the audience. If not, I'll entertain a motion to pass this budget expansion. Motion's been made, Secretary. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Budget expansion boating infrastructure grant uh, $1,285,868, City of Chattanooga Transit Dock Facility passes. Next item, Mr. Wright. Can you make that 900 instead of 868, please? I'm sorry. It's one million two eighty-five nine hundred. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want more, huh? <laughs> That's Mr. Ken's fault. Right. The second budget expansion is what Ed referred to as, as tier one dollars, and that's a pot of a hundred thousand dollars that we can award to uh, who needs it. Uh, and what this is, this hundred thousand is going to be split two ways. Sixty-five thousand will again go to the city of Chattanooga for further work. What happened is Chattanooga applied for the 65 before they applied for this big grant then it's they got the big grant but they had already put in for this small grant so and then here again it's all federal flow through dollars for the uh, boating infrastructure grant uh, and the city will match the 25 percent but the other 35,000 of that hundred thousand is going to go towards Ashland City and what they did last year we gave them 15,000 10,000 and they started a transit facility dock there in Ashton City, but this this 35 will Allow them to extend their docks from the money they got last year and again the city uh, the town of Ashton City will be responsible For the match 25% so, so the total you're asking for here is a hundred thousand. Yes, sir is That correct. I just I just want you to know 65 goes to Chattanooga and 35 will go to the town of Ashton City yes, Sir, is there any more questions from the Commission? Anyone from the audience? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I have a second. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes for a budget expansion building structure, $100,000, 65,000 going to city of Chattanooga, 35,000 going to town of Ashland City. You done? Yes, sir, I am. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call Dwight Hensley, Chief Engineering Division. Thank you, Darren. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question of Ed before? Has, Ed, has, has the city of Memphis applied for this infrastructure grant? That, no, sir, they have not. We have, uh, it's been a couple of years since we met with them. We have met numerous times with them, and they never have. Same, same uh, I want to say begging them, but we have been seeing that it would be a good project there as well as the DNA. Who did you meet with, Benny Linderman? Or? It was with the Parks Department, and forgive me, I, I don't. Okay. I don't have The chair recognizes Dwight Hensley. Thank you, Commissioner Griggs. This is a request for approval to increase by $12,000 a capital improvement project for work at the Priest WMA. This increase will allow us to complete the storage building and finish this project this summer. Funding sources is 75% federal and 25% agency. Any questions from the commission? Audience? Any discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion been made to have a second. Second. Second been made. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Budget expansion capital improvement project priest Demi May for 12,000 passes. Thank you, Ms. Chancey. Thank you. Chair recognizes Darrell Radajak, Chief Wildlife Division. 
Thank you, Commissioner. We are requesting a $30,000 budget expansion to accept and receive a donation that uh, came in through the Arbor, Do Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, th this is a grant we've been very successful getting over the past couple of years, but we can't count on it, so that's why we have to request a budget expansion. Uh, Brant Miller, our, our chief forester, was able to sec secure that grant for 30,000, which will allow us to plant 75,000 additional oak seedlings on our West Tennessee uh, lands. And so this is all grant money that would just be used to pay for, for those tree plantings. Any questions from the commission, from the audience? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move. Motion been made, have a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Budget expansion, $30,000, planning of 75,000 oak seedlings that John Tully WMA passes. Gordon, we always save the best for last, sir. Would you come to the front? Thank you. We appreciate you doing that. Yes, sir. Give us a real estate report. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, on your real estate report, if you want to follow along in your book, uh, the first track that we have is in Carroll County. This is in addition to the Gerald Switch Wildlife Management Area. Uh, this is, uh, the appraisal has been contracted on this and will be completed in about a 45 day period. The uh, next one we have is Chester County. This is uh, about 300 acres that we're getting from Tennessee Parks and Greenways. Uh, the region one manager tells me that the tires and the uh, trash are going to be picked up this weekend and that Monday we'll be able to move towards closing. Uh, the next one we have is Cock County, Rankin Bottoms. This is uh, an approximate 878 acre tract of land in region four uh, that the Conservation Fund is assisting us in the acquisition of, and the survey is in, in progress on this to determine the correct number of acres in the property. The next uh, three transactions are linked together. This is uh, about 280 acres of land in the Wolf River bottoms of the, of the Rif Wolf River and the Wolf River Conservancy is uh, the people that we purchased the property from. Uh, the next one we have is the Wolf River, WMA, Raleigh LaGrange, and Fayette County. This is a track of land that uh, Mr. Rice, Commissioner Rice and uh, Commissioner Cox are assisting us in uh, helping a gentleman give us about 400 acres of property in the Wolf River bottoms. Uh, the next one we have is uh, Hawkins County, this is Pearson Cave, about 30 acres. Uh, this is being acquired with the assistance of the Nature Conservancy. Uh, this is uh, for a uh, cave that contains bats. The next transaction is Jackson County. This is the Blackborn Fork, 163 acre tract of land. Uh, that closed this last week and this was, uh, this was assisted in the acquisition with Tennessee Parks and Greenways at a reduced uh, consideration. Uh, and let's see the next one is uh, Monroe County. This is where we're uh, going to build a work base. Uh, we have approval from the Building Commission to pay TVA for the cost of doing the land transfer to the state. Uh, the next one, Montgomery County, is Bellamy Cave. Uh, this is uh, all the appraisals and everything have been completed, and this is the deed is being prepared to close this one up. Okay, the next uh, transactions in Van Buren and White Counties. Uh, let's see, we have one, two, three, six transactions. These are the Cunningham Lumber Company tracks in the White and Van Buren County. And uh, it's going to be probably about 3,600 acres total that we're in the process of acquiring. And this is with the assistance of the Land Trust of Tennessee. And uh, that's about all I have except for a, a, an announcement from Tennessee Parks and Greenways. They, have, uh, they will be having a dedication on 
the Virgin Falls uh, property that is now owned by the state of Tennessee. They haven't final, finalized the exact time and date, but uh, they have assured me that uh, they will be sending invitations to everyone uh, for that dedication. And it will probably be around the 14th of this next month. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to ask them. If any questions for the commission? Mr. Scott. I've got one, and I'm not sure you're the proper gentleman to ask. I talked to Steve Patrick about gas wells and gas leases. Is there any update, or is it a proper time to talk about those? For me, uh, one of y'all. We've got some folks going up uh, uh, next month. 26th. 26th of June to do a site inspection. Whether it's practical to, to have a well site on on the property, whether or not it would be practical to have a well site off off the property and, and horizontal drill or horizontal drill and tap the oil reserves underneath the property. So we're we're, we're in the process of evaluating the proposal that we receive. So if it's off the property, we would still get the benefit of the. Correct. Okay. Gordon, I just wanted to say thanks for the maps. They're very helpful that you've Great. included. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Any more questions for the commission? Anyone from the audience? If not, Chairman McMillan, we'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Are there any comments or announcements that we need to make today? I have a question. Director Carter, you're going to be here tomorrow, as far as you know. I've got some comments, but I'll save them tomorrow. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Sleep well tonight. <laughs> um, all right, I guess we're adjourned until tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Thank you.